Welcome to video number 13 in my indoor weather station tutorial series. This one's going to be a little bit more involved in terms of wiring and that's because we are using an analog sensor. There are two types of, of signals in general, the digital ones like all the, the, the rest that I've been uh, um, showing and then there are analog signals and um, the Raspberry Pi GPIO uh, um, pins generally want to have digital inputs. That's why we need a so-called analog to digital converter to transfer the analog signal into a digital signal. So the way that goes is um, we've got all these little legs here and we can place it like this so that we can uh, um, access all of them separately. Now note that there is a top and a bottom you'll see that here there's this tiny sort of half moon shape there and that denotes the top. So I'll place it like this. And um, if you look for MCP3008 and Adafruit, they actually have a, a, a good research, resource here that shows you how to wire this up. Note that there are two different types of wirings. There is the software SPI wiring and hardware SPI and we will be using this version, the software SPI. So the way that this works is you've got a bunch of pins here that you need to connect to the Raspberry Pi. And then here you've got channels. So here in theory, you could hook up eight different um, analog sensors. We'll be plugging our sound sensor in one and later on we'll be putting a wind sensor in two. So for now, let's get right to it. Maybe we can start um, with the sensor because that's fairly easy. So the sensor here has an out uh, pin and that is the signal so that will go in here and then we'll need a uh, ground and supply voltage and this sensor can take anything from 2.4 to 5.5 volt and we're going to be using uh, 3, 3 volt for this. So what I'm going to do now is take the power supply and already just create a power line here and a ground line. Okay, now um, I think it would be good maybe to first wire up all of these. So you can follow along with the Adafruit resource. So this up here, VDD, needs power. The one below also needs power. Then we need, so this A, G and D here needs ground. So we'll hook that up like so. And then this is the last one. Oops. So this one also needs ground supply. Okay. And then we have the four in between, CLK to CS. Um, for those, we need uh, pins that connect to the Raspberry Pi directly. So let's see. Um, so the first one, this one here, that is CLK, and then connects to pin number 18, which is the sixth one on the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then the next one connects to pin number 23, that is this one. And the next one is connected to 24, which is this one. And then this one connects to 25, which is this one. And Note that these numbers that they were giving us, 24 and 25, they are the pin 
the GPIO pin numbers, so the, the basically the names of the pins, not not the, the the logical numbering of it. So I would say that the top uh, left is number one and the top right is number two, then three, four, and so on. Uh, that's not the case. So there are a, a couple, there are a bunch of different pins and they are assigned names and pin 18 uh, is just a name. It's it's not the logical numbering if you, if you follow. So finally now our sensor has ground and supply voltage right next to it. Okay. Phew. Okay, so as you can see, this gets uh, complicated really quickly. I should have probably turned this around and it would have been a bit easier, but I, I wanted to um, have it facing the way it is in the, in the tutorial. So now what we need is this library to access this um, uh, um, analog to digital converter, which is called MCP3008. And here again, like we've done in previous tutorials, we just copy this. Then we go to our Raspberry Pi and do sudo git clone and paste in this. It's creating a directory and unpacking everything. Okay, and then, and this is similar to what we've had to do uh, in earlier tutorials as well. We need to go in there and say sudo python run the setup.py file and do the install. Okay, that completed, and now we want to go up one directory so that we're back in our data logging directory. Now let's write the, um, the code. So we're going to need time, and then we are going to import Adafruit GPIO.SPI. And Adafruit GPIO, we actually um, imported in a different tutorial, I think, in an earlier video. Now we will import this, the one that we just downloaded. And we'll need, uh, I think we'll need a, a map function later on. So, now we will create this MCP um, object from Adafruit um, MCP3008, we'll create this object. And in it, we need to pass um, the different, uh, uh, um, what do you say, the different pins. So the CLK pin was pin number 18. The CS um, pin was 25. Then the MISO pin was 23 and the MOSI was 24. Okay. Now we need a sample window in which um, the noise levels will be um, measured each time. So there'll be one second in our case. And now, just as in all the other tutorials, we'll start a while loop. And now what we need to do is um, basically we're going to measure um, a maximum signal in this time frame of one window, and we're going to measure a minimum 
uh, um, signal. Um, sorry, I need to concentrate here. So uh, um, analog signals, um, basically they measure voltage from zero to um, 124, and or they, they, they measure a voltage and translate this to a value of um, to a value between zero and one twenty four. So the noise level that we're going to get out at the end, it's going to be expressed as a voltage basically, um, and won't give, give us exact decibel numbers for that. You would need an actual decibel meter, but it will give us some insight as to whether there's more or less noise. Okay, and now we will say while the current time minus um, sorry, minus the start time and actually we need to specify that so start time is going to be current time at that point so while this is smaller than the sample window. Um, the current sample is going to be read into uh, it's going to be read into the variable sample by mcp dot read analog to digital converter. And if the sample is within that allowable range, if not, there would, there would be some kind of um, um, error. Now we're going to say if this sample, sample is larger than signal, um, signal max, which at first we set to the smallest possible number. Then we'll say signal max is equal to sample. So that's basically saying I'm trying to find the largest signal and the smallest signal within this time frame of one, one second every time. So originally I put the maximum on the smallest and the minimum on the lar largest possible value. And then as I step through, if I find one that is larger than this, um, I will reset signal max to, to this one. And the same is going to happen if the sample is um, smaller than signal min, which initially will have at the highest level, then the signal min will be reset to sample. Okay, and I will step out of that while loop. So a second has now passed and these values have been constantly updating whereby signal max has been constantly getting bigger and this has been constantly getting smaller. And then after this time frame, we now have a, a maximum, a, a true maximum value and a true minimum value that was measured within that, within that time frame. So we want to know what um, the range was in between first. So that will be signal max minus signal min and that will just be the the range basically um, between the peak and the and the, um, the below and now we can calculate the voltage which is going to be the peak to peak times 3.3 volts because remember we're supplying 3.3 volts and we are going to divide that by uh, 124. Okay, and then all we're going to do, actually volts, I mean, I'm going to call this noise, so just N in keeping with the, with the other tutorials, and then we will print that. But note that it won't be decibel, it will be um, a voltage in between 0 and 3.3. And according to that, we'll, we'll be able to get a sense of, of how 
how, how much the, the noise is increasing or decreasing. Anyway, I hope that wasn't too complicated the way I explained it. So we will save this as max4466. And now hopefully this will work. Python. There we go. Let's see. Nope, that didn't work. Hang on, what's happening here? Um, start time. I believe start time needs to go in here. Yes, it, it needs to be um, reset every second. Sorry about that. So save. And we will redo that. OK, that looks ab about right. You can see while I'm talking, uh, this gets higher. And if I just stay quiet, it drops again. You can see it goes up to about yeah, 0 0.8. Yeah, and if I go real close, then um, it goes over, over 1.5. So there you go. Like I said, this is not decibel. It's just volts, and it gives you uh, um, some idea of how noisy your room is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.